In this lesson, we are going to discuss the graphs of y equals cosine x and y equals sine x. Now, let us recall that if I have my unit circle over here and this angle is t, I will be using t instead of theta. The x-coordinate is given by cosine t sine of t. All right. So what we want to do here is to sketch the graph of y equals sine t. In order to do that, we will keep track of t and sine of t. Now, I will be just looking at values, the quadrantal angle. Since we are getting the graph of sine t, we will be recording the y coordinates on your unit circle. What will happen when we increase our angle from 0 to pi over 2? Of course, when angle is pi over 2, what is sine of pi over 2? This is the point 0, 1. So therefore, sine pi over 2 is equal to 1. What we want to do is to keep track of the angles in between 0 to pi over 2. So in order to do that, let me just slide this angle over here and keep track of the red point. All right. So again, let me go back. So there you go. Notice that if I stop here, notice that you always have the same y coordinate. Look at this one. 0 0.783, 0 0.783. Why is that? This point keeps track of the y coordinate because this point is the point t sine of t. So this is saying that when t is 0 0.9, its sine is equal to 0 0.783. When we hit pi over 2, of course, there, look at this one. So that's 1.6 is approximately pi over 2. So when we do that, the graph will look like this. This is the path that will be taken by the red point. So again, let's do that. Look at that. Can you see? There. And of course, from pi over 2 to pi, what will happen to sine? The sine will be equal to 0 when t is equal to pi, right? Again, take note of the movement of the red point as we progress. There. So what will happen there? The movement is something like that. 3.14, this is 3.14, but of course pi is a um, irrational number, so that's why you don't have zero there. But of course, but for pi, sine is equal to zero. When you go to 3 pi over 2, what will happen to the y coordinate? It will approach negative 1. So starting from pi, you go to 3 pi over 2. There you go. So this is approximately 3 pi over 2. And your graph is something like that. And then from 3 pi over 2, we go to 2 pi. So this is my point when t is equal to 2 pi. That should be 0. And the graph is like that. Now, let's do that again from 0 to 2 pi, and let's see if we have the correct graph. Take note of the movement of the red point. Look at that. Right? And then it goes down to 0 as it hit, hits pi, and then it goes to negative 1, and then it goes to 0 again. So, this is one cycle of the graph of y equals sine of t. This is one cycle of y equals sine of t. So take note that it starts from the origin 0, 0 because again for your unit circle you're starting at this point and this point is 1, 0. The y coordinate is 0 when the angle is 0. And then it goes up to 1, 0, 
negative 1, and then it goes back to 0, and the cycle continues. And we say that the graph of y equals sine t has a period of 2 pi. Because after this, the graph will just repeat itself. Now, now similarly, we can also get the graph of y equals cosine of t. So let's say this is t. Cosine t, this time around, what we will be keeping track of will be the x-coordinate of your points on the unit circle, correct? Because cosine of t is given as the x-coordinate. So, for example, in this case, the purple point, so this one is 0, when t is equal to 0, the cosine is equal to 1. So, that's why you have the point zero one. 1. There you go. This blue point records t cosine of t. So, what happens when you move your point from 0 to pi over 2? What happens to the x-coordinate in your unit circle? Let's look at that. It becomes 0 when you hit pi over 2. Of course, that's 1.6. But the exact value is, if it's pi over 2, the cosine is equal to 0 because you will be at this point. So, pi over 2. Two, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And if we keep track of the movement of the blue point, it will be something like this. So let's see that again. Notice that the blue point, something like that. Okay, that's a rough sketch. And we go from pi over 2 to pi. It's approximately the point. We will be keeping track again of the values at the quadrantal angles. So, of course, let me just record it here. When cosine is pi, you are at this point. So, your, co your cosine of pi is negative 1. When t is equal to 3 pi over 2, cosine is 0. And when you hit 2 pi, cosine is again 1. So now here, I have approximately pi here. It will be at this point. So the graph will go to negative 1. Then from pi to 3 pi over 2, there you go. So this is approximately 3 pi over 2. And lastly, from 3 pi over 2 to 2 pi, there you go, you will reach 1. This is now one cycle of the graph of y equals cosine of t. So as you notice, it starts at 1, whereas for y equals sine of t, it starts at 0, 0. And why is that? Again, if you look at your unit circle, when t is equal to 0, cosine is 1. So here I will be showing the path of the... So let us check the path of the blue point. And then it goes to negative 1, and then it goes back up to 0, and then it goes to 1 again. So this is just a rough sketch of the graph of y equals cosine t. Here is now the exact graph of y equals cosine t. And take note that if we look at this one, this blue point y equals t cosine t, it will be this one. Look at that. See? Now that's perfect. One cycle is from here up to here. So here are now the graphs of y equals cosine t and y equals sine t. Of course, you can always change t to x. I will be using x instead because this is our x-axis. But remember here that x is your angle in radians. Alright, so notice the difference between y equals cosine x and y equals sine here is a summary of what we have just discussed earlier, the graphs of y equals sine x and the graph of y equals cosine x.
So here are the properties of the sine function. First, the domain is the set of all real numbers. In my diagram over here, this is just one period. But of course, this one will just repeat itself. And then, so that's why the domain is the set of all real numbers. Because all the numbers on the x-axis will have a corresponding y-coordinate. Second, the range consists of all real numbers from negative 1 to 1. Remember that this one will be like that. And the only numbers that are covered on your y-axis would be this one, negative 1 to 1. You do not have a point which will go all the way, let's say, at negative 2. That is just impossible. Next, the sine function is periodic with period 2 pi because this is one period. The x-intercepts occurs at multiples of pi. So this one, 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on. You do not have to memorize that. If you just look at your unit circle, x-intercept means that sine of theta is equal to 0. Where will be sine theta equal to 0? Remember that sine theta is the y-coordinates on your unit circle. The y-coordinates on your unit circle will be 0 at this point, right? And these are multiples of pi. This is 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and so on. And of course, their negative counterparts. Next, the extreme values, 1 and negative 1 occurs at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and so on. Again, if you look at your unit circle, when I say extreme values at 1, where will sine of theta be equal to 1? Here, the y-coordinate here is equal to 1 because this is the point 0, 1. And these are pi over 2 and its coterminal angles. And sine of theta will be negative 1 at this point. 0, negative 1. And this is the angle... 3 pi over 2 and its coterminal angles. So that would be 7 pi over 2 and so on. This is 5 pi over 2 and so on. So that's why you have this. Similarly, for the cosine function, this is one period of the cosine function. The domain is also the set of all real numbers. The range consists of all real numbers from negative 1 to 1 also inclusive because the only points on the y-axis that will be covered will be this one. The cosine function is periodic with period 2 pi and the x-intercepts occurs at this point. Why is that? Because at this point, the x-coordinate is 0. This is the point 0, 1. This is the point 0, negative 1. Correct? Remember that for cosine, we are looking at the x-coordinate on your unit circle. And these are pi over 2 and its coterminal angles, 3 pi over 2 and its coterminal angles. The extreme values 1 and negative 1 occur at the multiples of pi. In our next video lesson, we will be discussing the various variations of y equals sine x and y equals cosine x.